twas the night before Christmas and on Titans All Access. Ho, ho, ho. He's made his list. He's checked it twice. Ho, ho, ho. Santa Claus is coming to town for a Titans Texans showdown that'll be naughty or nice. Plus, you can't beat home sweet home for the holidays if you're Derrick Henry giving back. <laughs> Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night as Titans All Access starts right now. <laughs> the franchise record for touchdowns. There he is, the Yuli Bulldozer, Derrick Henry. Touchdown, Titans. Chig Akakwo. Tannehill. He's got it to Burks. He's going to be sacked. It's McCrary with his first career INT. Tipped it back in bounds, and it's intercepted by Kalou. Welcome to Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. Merry Christmas. Ready for Saturday football? You ready for Saturday football? I'm ready for Saturday football. I like Saturday football. Saturday football is going to be a good thing. Titans and the Texans at Nissan Stadium, Saturday at noon central time. Have you seen the weather forecast? I have seen the weather forecast as someone who will be outside. It's going to be chilly, Mike. Cold, cold. Cold, cold. That's Bring what we coat. call it. Embrace it. It's supposed to be cold. Let's be great, man. Playoff weather. The record for cold at Nissan Stadium is 23 degrees in the season finale in 2017 when the Titans beat the Jaguars to go to the playoffs. 23 degrees. We might not even get close to that on Saturday. Ooh, it's going to be How many layers? Chilly. Oh, at least five. But you have to be festively dressed too, though, don't you? Because it's Christmas Eve. Well, yeah, I mean, you can be festive and also be layered. There's an art to it, but there's going to be a lot of fun things to cheer for. That's going to be a great game, and Titans fans have a lot to be excited about right uh, now. Right now, absolutely. And that brings us to the Hughes and Coleman decision of the week. Mike, a big vote for the Metro Council. What did they decide exactly, and why is it so good for the Titans? There were two things that Metro Council considered on Tuesday night. Number one, a vote yes for a 1% hotel motel occupancy tax increase, which will be used to help fund the new Titan Stadium. And number two, an agreement on the terms between the team and Metro on what their part will be in building the new stadium. So the good part of this decision, things are moving along for a new Titan Stadium to come in 2026 or 2027. Now, there are still more things to get taken care of in the first quarter of 2023. So everything is not done, but all the plans you've seen, all the things we've shown you, all the wonderful aspects of the new Nashville Stadium that we've talked about on track to be built. What a Christmas gift for the Titans Titans fans everywhere, and also this part of the country, as everybody is going to love this new building. And Saturday, wouldn't you wish we had a roof? Man, having a roof <laughs> would really be nice, and it's exciting, all the things to watch in the yes, new year. Yes, absolutely. Well, we have a lot to watch on this edition of Titans All Access as well, including a one-on-one -on -one with Andrew Adams. It's coming up next on the holiday edition of Titans All Access. Hey guys, Coach Mack here with this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface, beginning now. Today we're going to look at four excellent plays by the Titans defense against the Los Angeles Chargers in SoFi Stadium. First play, second seven, first quarter. Ball's on the plus 25. Chargers are in 11 personnel with trips speed alignment, which means all three wide receivers are to the defensive left. Titans in a four-man front. Man-to-man -man with single high safety with a low hole rat in Monty Rice, number 56. Excellent TT game inside with Big Jeff and Naquan Jones. Simmons makes a nice step outside on the guard, followed by a perfectly executed two-hand swipe and swallows the quarterback for a nine-yard loss and a Big Jeff celebration. Next play we're going to look at. This is second 10, second quarter, 12 seconds on the clock. Scores tied at 7-7 at the plus 25-yard line. Chargers are in 11 personnel, two by two with top of number splits by the outside receivers on both sides. Titans are in a four-man rush, deep sink quarters to protect the end zone. Two outside wide receivers run a takeoff route. Herbert launches to Mike Williams. Bud Dupree has a perfect speed to power rush, does not not allow her 
Herbert to follow through on the deep throw. McCrary makes an incredibly heads-up athletic play by elevating, seeing Kalu behind him, and inbounds, volleyballs the ball to him, and Kalu makes another athletic play by not only catching the football and being very alert to what McCrary was trying to do in this unusual situation, but also getting both feet down. One of the most incredible interceptions I have seen in my National Football League career, which is a long time. Next play, third and five on the plus 49, 13-32 in the third quarter. Chargers are again in 11 personnel, two by two, shotgun formation. Titans are mugging both linebackers backers in the A gaps with wide rush alignments by the front four. Titans bail out on a five under two deep zone coverage, confuse Herbert with the mug droppers and pre-snap bogey coverage. Offensive line slides to Big Jeff, allowing number 95 to Marcus Walker to power rush the guard and eat up Herbert for a big sack on third down for a seven yard loss. 5.53 in the third quarter, second and eight on the plus 27. Chargers in 11 personnel, two by two. Jet motion by number 13, Keaton Allen, behind the quarterback in shotgun, making it a three by two split. Titans are in four-man rush, quarters coverage. Kevin Byard playing the inside quarters, gets an excellent read on the dagger route, which is a deep dig to his side. Demarcus Walker, number 95, gets a tremendous power rush on the offensive guard, makes Herbert move off the spot. Byard gets an excellent directional delivery key and steps in front of Williams for a tremendous, tremendous interception in zone coverage. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access. The Texans don't have a great record in 2022, but they've been playing some outstanding football lately. They gave the Dallas Cowboys and the Kansas City Chiefs all they wanted in the last two weeks, and we know they always play the Titans tough. If Tennessee's going to win over Houston on Saturday, The Titans need a big day and some big plays from the defense. Yeah, I'm one of those guys who needs to step up is Andrew Adams. He's a defensive back who we've seen make some big plays this season. I had a chance to sit down and talk with him about his journey to the Tennessee Titans in this week's Nissan Insider. You've played for a lot of different organizations in a lot of different schemes and for a lot of different coaches. How does that benefit you at this phase in your career? I just think um, I'm able to understand what the coaches are asking me to do uh, because I've either done it before, or I've done a version of it before. So I might have to tweak one or two things, you know, in technique. But uh, for the most part, I pretty much play, you know, every coverage and, you know, most of the like configurations of the defense that you can have. Uh, I've been in, so I, I do think it helps. You've gone from being an undrafted free agent all the way to playing for a Super Bowl winning team. That's a tremendous amount of ground to cover. Do you feel like that gives you a lot of credibility when you walk into a room, especially maybe with some of the younger guys on the team that you have seen and experienced pretty much every kind of circumstance? Um, it might to them, but to me, I, I don't think just winning a Super Bowl um, you know, gives me credibility. I think your quality of work and how you show up every day and, you know, how you approach day to day, you know, routines kind of gives you more of that credibility to younger guys um, because they can see, you know, better than they can hear. So even if I'm, you know, I'm telling them this, that, you know, one thing or the other thing, they're going to be able to, you know, see my day to day actions more than, you know, they're going to listen to me telling them something. I want to go back before you were a pro. Back in college, you almost played baseball and not football. Is that correct? That's correct. That's very correct. What was it about football that you couldn't walk away from, that you couldn't leave? Honestly, I think it was, you know, game day. You know, um, everybody always, you know, in the football world, enjoy the process, you know, the practice, the workouts, the getting in shape. You know, all that's a process for game day. But I just think, you know, game day, there's just that feeling that you get that nothing else in the world can you know give you that feeling um and i think that feeling is honestly why i kept playing football i just couldn't let that go we've seen you get some interceptions that are pretty crazy i don't want to say i mean call anyone out specifically but a 76 yard return for a touchdown (laughs) against the indianapolis colts um plays like that moments like that Do those still excite you the way that they did when you first started your career? I mean, you're a veteran player now. You've been doing this for a minute. Do you still get that same rush? Oh, for sure. You know, those are the, you know, those are the the plays that you're waiting for, really. Those are the plays that, 
you watch so much film for. Those are the plays that you practice. And when those, you know, when those opportunities come in the game, they don't come all the time. So when you get them, you know, one, you have to relax because you want to make the play, you know, you want to finish. And then, um, you know, afterwards, it's kind of just a, I don't know, it's a sense of relief, like, oh, I've been waiting on this moment. And you definitely still, this, you know, the same excitement because, you know, you have your teammates, you have everybody patting you on the back, you know, you're helping the team win, you know, and that's most important is that you're, help, you're helping the team win. So whatever you can do that, you're gonna, you're gonna feel good about, you know, yourself for sure. I am a fan of Andrew Adams. Yeah, everybody should be. Yeah, he will pop you one. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. <laughs> hey, speaking of that, we're going to be talking ball in the next segment, and I'm going to bring on a guy who he popped you one. Oh, yeah? A Titans great. Michael Ruse will be sitting right there. Yeah. She won't. He will. Yep. Michael Ruse right there. When we're talking ball, presented by Duncan in the Bet MGM studio next on Titans All Access. Welcome back into the Bet MGM Studios, and it's time for Talking Ball with a special guest. This is Pro Bowl offensive tackle Michael Ruse of your Tennessee Titans. I guess I have to say former. What is Michael Ruse doing now? Tell us all about what you got going on in your life. Uh, mostly just living it, you know, enjoying it. Been did a lot of traveling after retiring, and now we have a little boy, and takes up a lot of my time. Mm -hmm. And he's a big fella. He's big, yeah. He's three feet tall, about 32 pounds already, 20 months old. So basketball recruiters, you want to get Michael Ruse <laughs> yeah. on your list already. The AAU coaches will be calling. All right, so how involved do you stay with football now, now that you have a little perspective being away from it for a decade almost? Watching it, you know, go on Twitter occasionally to <laughs> vent, but uh, mostly just watch it, you know, still watch it every weekend. When you watch the game, what do you watch? I. Weirdly, recently, I've started watching a lot more defense. You know, I tried to learn it as much as I could when I was playing, and now I watch the O-line, and as soon as the balls kind of snap it for a second or so, I kind of end up moving to the secondary to see what's going on, to know who's going to be open. Wow. Just trying to teach myself a little more and just understand the game a little more. You thinking about coaching? No. No? No, no, no. No interest? As smart a player as you were? Never. And you were a technician too. I have a few friends who are coaches at different levels and the amount of hours needed to put into it, I just don't want to give. All right, so the Titans this Saturday are playing against the Houston Texans. You saw them twice a year through your entire career. Do you have a game against the Texans that jumps out to you the most? Yeah, Vince's. 2006 yeah. in Houston? Yeah, Vince's game, the overtime run, and then Rob Baronis with the, the seven field goals. Eight. Right. eight. Eight for the game winner, yeah. Those two, I think, were the... They were back-to-back -back years. Yeah. They were pretty physical games. Yeah, it was always a lot of fun playing against Houston. All right, so the Titans start a rookie right tackle this year. His name is Nicholas petit Frere. He started every game. You started your first game at left tackle for Brad Hopkins, and then when Brad came back, you moved to right tackle. What are the challenges that Nick has gone through this year playing that spot, knowing you did it in 2005? I think the biggest thing is probably just speed. I'm sure by now it's whatever week 15, 16. Um, things have slowed down, but early on, it's just the speed of the game is just so different. And trying to probably get a good rapport and a good back and forth with your guard, the center, quarterbacks, trying to understand everything everybody's saying and doing. Um, by now, I would assume he's probably feeling a lot more comfortable than he was week one. You were part of a tackle twosome that was together a long time. David Stewart, Big Country. Um, what is Big Country doing now? He is a preacher in Alabama. The He's guy, a preacher? The guy that never spoke is talking to a congregation every Sunday, yeah. You know, he set the record with me for most questions asked in an interview in a minute 15, because every question was a one-word answer. Mm -hmm. He, nice guy, literal great Titans player, Worst interview in Titans history, and he delivers sermons now? Uh -huh. It's a miracle. It is, yeah. And he's pretty rough character, too. He might have hit some guys a couple oh, yeah. times. <laughs> but he's, he's a softy at heart. He is a, a great guy. And you guys were fantastic together. All right, tell me how the Titans win this game Saturday over the Texans. What do we got to do? What coach has been harping? I mean, you just got to play your game, play football. You can't do too much. You can't overthink it. Let it come to you. No, 
So are you available to come back and oh. no? No. Not happening? <laughs> no, Man, no, it's no. so good to see you. Thanks for talking <laughs> ball yeah, presented course. by yeah. Duncan. Please. That's Michael Rouge, former Pro Bowl Titan, offensive tackle, one of the greats of his era. When we come back, another great. Derrick Henry and more of his story as the Titans 2022 Walter Payton Man of the Year. That's next on Titans All Access. Nashville's a top five city in America in terms of chef-driven restaurants. It's always a tremendous honor to be able to represent the city. Nashville's freaking amazing. Hey, it's Matt Moore. Be sure to check out Taste of Tennessee exclusively on LG channels and LG OLED TVs. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Derrick Henry is the Tennessee Titans Walter Payton Man of the Year for the second year in a row. And we've seen over the last couple weeks on Titans All Access many of the great things he does around the Nashville community. But one of the things that makes Derrick most special is he's never forgotten his hometown of Uly, Florida, and his reach certainly extends there even now. Derrick doesn't make a big deal about the things that he does. So a lot of times it's after the fact that that I learn what things have come from him. There has been an allotment of Nike gear that consistently comes in that he has donated. My first year here, we did t-shirts, we did like these really sweet Nike half practice pants, and we did shorts. There was an allotment of $5,000 for the weight room that Derek sent us. The other piece that he, I know for sure, has donated was he re reconditioned helmets through some of the money they sent us. And that's important because you got to get those helmets certified every year. That's a player safety thing. I know that's big for on everybody's mind, and it's a big piece of the puzzle. He just has that kind of spirit. He is a kind and generous person who doesn't forget people who took care of him when he was young. If we don't have what Derek has been able to do for us, I've got to take money out of improving our practice field, improving our game field, to get our guys some essentials like that Nike gear. Like It's important for us to feel like a football team. This past year, we went with the jacket I'm currently wearing, pants that match, Yuli up, Yuli up the side with the embroidery. Every day of the week, you could tell a football player because they are proudly strutting around in those track suits. You should see the, the kids' faces when they got them. It was incredible. Like this jacket, this, this jacket pant combination was the best thing that could have happened. This team didn't have those kind of things when Derek was here. They were literally sharing shoes and, and belts and, and things like that. But so I'm sorry, that makes me a little emotional to think about that for him. the experience he's giving these kids that he didn't have. For Derek to care so much about us, that's showing what he's about in his character. His selflessness for this community, his love for this community and where he grew up. He doesn't have to do the things that he does. He's doing this out of his own generosity. It's selfless. He's never forgot about Uly, Florida. The NFL announced its rosters for this year's Pro Bowl games on Wednesday. Running back Derrick Henry, defensive lineman Jeffrey Simmons, and long snapper Morgan Cox were all selected from the Titans. Additionally, linebacker Dylan Cole, punter Ryan Stonehouse, center Ben Jones, and safety Kevin Byard were named as alternates. This marks the second selection for both Henry and Simmons and the fifth for Cox. Want to get closer to the next Titans game or get on the field? Place your bids now for special VIP on-field experiences at Nissan Stadium during Titans home games or bid for truly unique Titans autographed items. Plus, 100% of your bids will support the Titans Foundation to serve communities throughout Tennessee. Just log on to auctions.tennesseetitans.com to place your bids and tighten up. It's your favorite part of Titans All Access in the BetMGM studio. It's time for your Titans game ticket. Saturday football, Nissan Stadium. 
Christmas Eve. Let's have that game ticket, Amy Wells. All right, Mike Keith. Well, if you plan on coming out to Nissan Stadium to watch the Titans take on the Houston Texans, bring a coat. But also or get two. Yeah, or two or three or a couple layers. You're going to need them. But also make sure you arrive early because there's a Winter Gloves Gate giveaway, and you're going to need those too. The War and Treaty will perform the national anthem, while Titans cheerleaders and the Blue Crew drumline will perform a holiday halftime show. And I cannot emphasize this enough, bring a coat. Two. I cannot emphasize enough that I think, my prediction, that the War and Treaty will have one of the all-time great national anthems in the history of Nissan State. Really? Yes. I am excited I'm laying for that. it on the line because I think the War and Treaty that talented. I am worth really the price fired of admission. Just for the anthem. Just for the anthem. All and right. to see the Titans go to eight and seven, taking on the Houston Texans. Titans countdown on your favorite Titans radio station begins at 11 a.m. Central. We'll kick it off at 12.02. Titans and the Texans at Nissan Stadium. And we'll have a little Christmas cheer if we get that win. Oh, I love that. I know. You're a big Christmas cheer person. I'm a very big Christmas cheer person, yes. All right. That does it for Titans All Access. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next time.